Welcome everybody and today I'm going to share with you some of my favourite images from this year, 2021. Now these aren't necessarily the absolute best, I haven't picked out the best top 10 or whatever. If I did that we'd probably be here till 2022. Uh, but I've just picked out some that for specific reasons I really really like, some which have a little bit of story to them. I'm going to give you the technical information and go through that as well. So no superfluous rambling, let's get straight into it. And the first one, this situation is where I was photographing, uh, making the most of the conditions, photographing on misty mornings at a local pond. So here it was about photographing the conditions rather than any specific species. And one of the species that I did get quite regularly for a few days was the Canada goose. Now, some of you out there will probably know that if you get a situation where you get Canada geese and swans on the same pond, it doesn't always tend to go that well. Swans will react rather aggressively. So I've seen this happen a couple of times, obviously there's opportunity for pictures. And so when it was about to happen again, I was ready with the camera. And sure enough, the male swan, the cob came over um, to stamp his authority to say, this is my pond. So as soon as the geese took flight, that was my opportunity to try and track them to get some images. So that's one of the reasons I like this picture, it's just the whole situation and a little bit of behaviour that happened before the image was taken. I love the conditions, which was the main reason I was here shooting in the first place, shooting towards the sun just after sunrise with mist over the water. And it's kind of got almost like a bit of a sepia tone to it, um, almost a little bit monotone. I do think it looks quite sepia. Here I used a very, very fast shutter speed. It was about one two thousandth of a second. That's allowed me to stop the movement uh, pretty much completely. And it's also allowed me to capture some of those water droplets, which are behind the geese as they're taking off, leaving those splashes from the feet. The next image is taken at exactly the same location. And uh, this is one of the reasons that I was there, which was to photograph great crested grebes. And I got some decent images this year. I've not been very lucky in the past. This year was much better. But what I did get was just one of those spur of the moment opportunities of one particular grebe which decided to take off. Now again it's very similar conditions to the geese. I don't think it was taken on exactly the same day but it is very similar conditions. This image is actually cropped. I've cropped this down probably by about 50% because I just really wanted to concentrate on the grebe and the splashes behind it. So it's, um, it's quite a, a simple image. You know there's not much in there. You've just got the bird, fairly clear background, you've got the water it is very very simplistic um, what I like about this is just because it's so unusual because you don't see grebes off the water very often you don't see them in flight very often well I certainly don't uh, even to see one take one off so to see a grebe's feet I think is quite unusual so we've got those massive great big club feet in this picture again we've got some splashes behind uh, I'm quite amazed I got this sharp I was shooting low down um, and it's very very hard to track birds when they're in flight or across the water it's really really hard to track them and keep on them when you're lying down as I was at the time there's different techniques for doing it but the way I was doing it it's really really hard from that position with your neck to track the bird as it begins to fly I'm really surprised how sharp this image is because I just had to react and do my best and hope the camera would focus but it is actually very very sharp so the great crested grebe is a bird I absolutely love and to get an unusual picture of it is fantastic. So next up we have some mammals and the first picture was actually taken on a one-to-one -one with a client and this picture is really about two things. It's about behaviour and it's about light. So we arrived very very early to be in good position if the sun decided to break which it did and we were watching one particular stag and he was walking around and he had his group of hinds there was a little bit of behavior in there and we were watching this before the sun came up and then when the sun came up the quality of light was just absolutely superb so we got that sort of you know that first light within certainly within the first half an hour of sunrise and we got some really nice portraits and then this particular image just a little bit of behavior all of a sudden the stag decided just to go for a little sniff and I just managed to catch it sniffing the back of this hind and interestingly she's got quite an interesting pose as well with her head down and kind of the um, the position of the legs it looks kind of very submissive um, so it's just one of those moments where you see something happening and you just try and react and fire the shutter so the quality of light here, absolutely beautiful. And also I really like the leaves at the top of the frame. I think the leaves kind of help to frame the image as well. 
and another image of red deer at the same location. Now this one, it's, I don't think it's an amazing image by any means, but it's just, it's much more about the, the pose and the symmetry. So I could see both these hinds, they were feeding and occasionally they were stopping, occasionally they were putting their heads up and I could see that they were kind of almost doing the same thing, almost a mirror image of each other. So I composed the shot vertically, turned the camera around to do it vertically to get the necks and the head to fit in a nice vertical composition. And what I love about this is just they're both just looking directly at the camera, they've got both got a mouthful of grass and it was really crucial for me to try and get both their heads and to make sure I had a gap between the two. So I had to position myself, I had to move myself enough to the side to get a bit of a gap between both heads uh, but not too far away so that I could keep quite a nice tight composition. I also really like the soft light which I think can be very nice uh, for texture for coats such as deer and other mammals. This year has been really good for my insect photography, not necessarily for the amount that I've done, but just for the sheer quality of images that I've achieved. And I've also been using the addition of a, a small LED, which is something which I made a video about as well. This image, it's certainly not going to win any awards, but there's a number of reasons I like it. So I really, really like the soft light on here. I think it really helps to bring out the colours. I do like soft light for macro, for insect photography. This six spot burdick moth is just absolutely faultless absolutely stunning the detail on it and the colors uh, the reds on it really really pop and i think that's partially from the addition of the small led so here i was shooting with the led directly on the camera and it just helped to lift it a little bit but you really can't tell and that's a sign that you've done it reasonably well if you can't tell you've got that additional light source um, but i think what i love about this the most is that metallic blue. I've never seen anything like this in burnet moths. It's almost like just this beautiful metallic blue on the antenna, just such an incredible color. And that's because this particular moth was very, very freshly emerged. At the right time, burnet moths are actually one of the most common subjects that I see for insect photography, uh, but also the same can be said about damselflies. Now I've taken lots of pictures of damselflies over the years. Uh, this particular one I'm going to show you now is a little different. Um, I've done this two or three times and other people have done it as well and done it much better than me. It's a bit of a classic shot, uh, but if you, can, if you can get this right and get in the right position, it works really, really well. So I just absolutely love this effect. I love this image. I love everything about it. It's really not easy to do. Um, it relies on being in the perfect position to get that symmetry and to get the eyes either side of the stem it's resting on. You've just got to get in that perfect position and doing that handheld is really not easy at all. So this was shot handheld. I couldn't get a tripod in simply because of the situation so I just got to do it handheld. Uh, due to that I had to push the ISO you know, pretty high in order to get a fast enough shutter speed to get a sharp picture. And also the focusing is really difficult as well. So I'm doing this actually with manual focus. This is my technique is to use manual focus and then rock back and forth and keep firing on a high frame rate. That's, that's the way I tend to do these kind of shots. So it's really about getting in the perfect position, um, just, <laughs> just keep persisting, keep persisting with it and just believe that you're gonna get that shot. And the next insect image is one that's really just about symmetry and color and impact as well. So this, I don't know what it is. I've no idea. Uh, if anyone wants to ID this for me, that would be fantastic. I'm gonna call it a fly. And this, this insect was walking around this particular flower and I could see there's a really good opportunity for an excellent image here. And this really is just about waiting until the insect was in the right position and trying to get a square on and waiting for it to, to be as square onto the camera for maximum depth of field, just shooting directly down. This is shot with a 100 millimeter macro lens, again, handheld. I've also got the LED on there, which just took a little bit of the shadow away from the inside of the flower, just helps to improve the image a tiny bit, but you really can't tell. Again, this is just about getting in the right position and just waiting and persisting. I must have taken at least 50 pictures of this, trying to get everything pin sharp, waiting for it to be in the perfect position. And for this split second, I felt it was in the right position and I fired off a few shots and it's nice and sharp. Crucially here, I'm just trying to keep everything symmetrical and balanced in the frame. And also I've cropped it a little bit. So I've cropped this image very slightly 
at either side just to try and get it as symmetrical as I can uh, for the middle of the flower. I do like this image just because it's, it's just got so much colour. It's just really, really in your face with colour, contrast and a lot of impact. Now again, I've no idea what this species is, uh, but I call this picture fly resting on sugar puffs above a fried egg. And next up we're back to birds and this is something that many of you will have seen probably numerous times, particularly if you live in the UK, and that is fighting coots. And I've tried to do this for years. I've, I've seen this, I've tried to photograph it for years. I've got it a couple of times, but never in good light. And this time I was just so lucky, just by chance to actually get it. So here again, I was by the pond, hoping to photograph great crested grebes and the two coots were come together. And you could see them, they kind of came together, um, doing the usual coot thing, putting the heads down, uh, the wings going up at the back sort of aggressive posture and it's almost like a Mexican standoff and they must have done this for about two whole minutes maybe even longer than that just staring each other out um, and obviously I knew something was going to happen and eventually it erupted into a full-blown fight now I just absolutely love this I've got a series of images of this so I think I've got three good frames and this is one of them uh, I just love I just love this action love the action shot love that kind of explosion of energy of power of the coots jumping up I've got the water droplets as well um, the, their feet are off the water almost like they're dancing I just love the energy in this image and really again it's just about this was just pure luck there's there's nothing else to say really being in the right place at the right time but not just being lucky enough to to see these coots do this but to for them to do it at the right distance for the lens I was using and to have the light almost directly behind me and even a clear background those things don't happen very often so I felt very very lucky and it was just my job to focus compose hold myself together and just keep firing interesting here that the shutter speed was 1 500th of a second that's just what I had at the time uh, exposing manually so I would generally go for a faster shutter speed for this kind of image but I'm actually really happy with the way it looks shooting at 1 500th has just allowed a little bit of movement to show particularly in the wings and the water droplets and there's nothing wrong with that so I'm really really happy with how it turned out next is possibly my favorite situation of the entire year and not one that I've ever vlogged um, or even posted pictures of really and that is this image of a young peregrine falcon uh, now some people might be thinking this is a, a captive bird I can assure you it's not it's a 100% wild bird that has recently fledged the nest now there's no disturbance here there is no disturbance to this bird um, we are not doing anything against the rules against the law because peregrines are protected at the nesting site by law I've got so many images of the peregrine falcons from this session and a couple of other sessions I did as well. This one I've just picked out for a number of reasons. It's on the edge of the cliff face here. So the background is really, really nice. And I just love the softness to this. Very, very soft background. Um, a little bit of out of focus foreground as well, which really, I think helps. I think it helps draw the eye in a little bit, but I just love the overall softness and the light is very soft as well. And I also love that little bit of out of focus color on the left hand side, that sort of yellowish, um, which I just think contrasts really nice with the cooler cast of the back of the bird, the feathers on the peregrine falcon. Uh, it's also got great eye contact. You've got a little bit of fluff there on the head because it is still recently fledged. This was taken with a 500 millimeter lens, but for this one, it's actually taken handheld. My piece of paper's just blown away. Um, <laughs> It was taken handheld because I don't usually have a tripod in this situation. Um, when I say handheld though, it was actually using my knee. So uh, is that handheld? It's a really, really good way to use a long lens if you can, is to use your knee uh, to support the lens. So that's what I did here. When I got into position with the camera, the lens resting on my knee, I got some really lovely images. If you have a favorite image from this video, then please do let me know and let me know why. I hope you get to take some great images yourself over the Christmas season. Thanks everybody for the support in everything I do and I'll see you on the other side.